Welcome to our online version of worship at the Lutheran Church of Del Rapids. I'm Pastor Jeff Sorensen. Pastor Eldon Thurow will be helping uh, with assisting with worship today as well and all of those of our worship team and who bring this worship to you. As we worship this week, uh, just a couple of announcements. I want to encourage you, if you are a member of our congregation, come on Sunday. Um, if you're able, we are having our annual meeting at 1130 Looking at and um, adopting a whole raft of constitution and bylaw changes that allow us as a congregation to further expand our ministry and our leadership. Uh, very important um, as a congregation. We elect our officers and make decisions leading uh, into our new year with a new mission plan as well. Uh, if you're not able to be here, please uh, pray for us and for uh, the work that we do together. A bit on our theme uh, for the message in our worship today. If you recall, and you were with us in worship last week, we talked about the need to be intentional uh, in these days about people, people, people. Our relationships with one another, rebuilding those relationships, being attentive uh, to, our, to our connections uh, with one another as people. And today we, we talk a little bit about maybe an even more important focus for us in this time. Um, when our hearts have grown uh, to ache for the need of connections with one another, we know that in this time uh, we also ache for a deeper, deeper connection with our God, with God. And so who is God for us and how do we respond to this loving, uh, merciful God in our lives and our need for a deeper connection with God as well. Please be safe. Thank you for joining us. As we worship, we worship in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. <clears throat> in the waters of baptism, we are once and forever made children of God. God redeems us from sin and death and raises us to new life in Jesus Christ. In these waters, we are drawn into God's community, joined together in God's mission for the sake of the world, for life, for community, for getting in on what most matters in life. Thanks be to God. Amen.
great is our God. Name above all names, worthy of all praise. My heart will sing how great is our God. Let us pray. O oh God, indeed you are our God. We marvel at your works and praise you with our whole heart. As we gather, may it be as your people and in the loving way of Jesus. As we are sent, may it be to do your work according to your will and in the way of Jesus. Praise your holy name. Amen. One of our favorite old hymns of praise, number 840 in our red ELW hymnal, could go like this. Now thank we all ourselves with hearts and hands and voices the wondrous things we've done in whom this world rejoices. No? I was inspired by a video, it's entitled Wrong Worship, to improve on some of our favorite hymns, especially um, those songs of praise. Like hymn 834 in our hymnal. Immortal, invincible, we are so wise, in light so accessible, just to our eyes. Or a more contemporary song of praise by Chris Tomlin, maybe a better version of it for us would be, How great is our church, sing with me, how great is our church, and all can see how great, how great is our church. No? Or another, and maybe even uh, more to the point, I exalt me, I exalt me, I exalt me, only me. You're not buying it? You don't think that's an improvement on those songs of praise to sing praise to ourselves? And to our church, instead of how wonderful we, as people, are. Last week I entitled my message in response to the story in the Gospel of Mark of Jesus calling his disciples to join him in setting out to fish for people. I called it people, people, people. That especially as... These days, like groundhogs coming up out of hibernation, as we reemerge from our kind of COVID, COVID hibernation and forced distancing from each other, that both in our families and relationships and friendships, and as a congregation, that we will need to be really deliberate on rebuilding relationships and reconnecting with people. After this long heartache of being apart, when our absence has proven that the heart does grow fonder with one another, the need for us now to learn from what we've learned and focus very intently, intentionally going forward on people, people, people. And that's true. But as important as reconnecting in relationships is people with people is now, what would happen to our faith life if that's all. Important as our people are, and they are, what happens to us, even without COVID and being apart, if our people, our peeps, our own, become all, if we are it in life? 
When that happens, when it becomes just me and mine, well, that can also result in a kind of isolation or my needs before the welfare of the whole. And in a church, we could become either a kind of lovey-dovey but pointless social gathering or even a kind of us above and apart from the rest of the world that we believe doesn't measure up to us. So that we might think, find ourselves thinking, if not singing, immortal, invincible, we are so wise, or how great is our church, or I exalt me, I exalt me, I exalt me, only me. People, people, people is quite simply important. But we gather as people for what purpose? And as people of faith, we are sent for what? And the purpose, the for what for us, is even simpler and more straightforward as I've entitled today's message from Psalm 111, very simply, God. No more complicated than that. God. We know a need, we know a heartache to reconnect with each other in this time, in any time. But we also know a need and a greater heartache to reconnect in this time and in any time with God. For the greater need for us as people of faith is for us to rebuild our relationships and connections with God and then also with each other as people of God, mutually loved by God, called to share. It is God's love that we share with one another. It's about us, yes, as community. But it's even more about us as a community of faith in God. Coming together to join together with the relationship and praise of our God. Our God who so keeps and sustains and upholds us even in times like this. Psalm 111 is just lovely. It's a recognition of the wonders of God's love and God's care for us, the deeds of the Lord. But it's also instructive in a right and good relationship with this God who deserves our thanks and praise. I'm going to read it for you now um, in a different way than we usually, usually read scripture. I've picked it apart and I'm going to read it in two separate readings. First, the major portions of Psalm 11 that speak to this recognition and praise, the centrality of the works and deeds of God. So I read that part of Psalm 111. Listen to what the psalmist claims, who claims God is and what God has done. Psalm 11, 111. Great are the works of the Lord. Full of honor and majesty is his work and his righteousness endures forever. He has gained renown by his wonderful deeds. The Lord is gracious and merciful. He provides food for those who fear him. He is ever mindful of his covenant. He has shown his people the power of his works in giving them the heritage of the nations. The works of his hands are faithful and just, all his precepts are trustworthy. They are established forever and ever. He, God, sent redemption to his people. He, God, has commanded his covenant forever. Holy and awesome is his name. God. That's God. Our God. But then, what about us? Psalm 111 is clear and to the point about us too. I ask you to read or listen as I read to the rest of Psalm 111. The parts that are as written are interspersed with those words about God. 
but they're more clear yet when we, when we pull those out and read alone those words about our response to and our life in relationship with that wonderful God. Psalm 111, about us and God. Praise the Lord. I will give thanks to the Lord with my whole heart in the company of the upright in the congregation. These works of the Lord are studied by all who also delight in them. All of these precepts of God are to be performed by us with faithfulness and righteousness. And then this, as the psalm concludes, verse 10. The fear of the Lord is the beginning of our wisdom. And those who practice it, the fear of the Lord, have a good understanding. And in them, his praise endures forever. That's the part about us. People, people, people who gather together in the company of the congregation. Why? For what purpose? To thank God with our whole heart. Why? To delight in what God has done. For what? To fear the Lord and to praise not ours, but his holy name. We gather as people of God to do this very well, to be community in the way of Jesus to do this very well, to worship, to praise this God who so loves us. And we are sent as people of God to also do this well. To love and serve one another with abandon and generosity also in the way of Jesus. If not, if not, and it's just about us, people, people, people only, we can become to parody what will be our sending hymn today, number 697 in our hymnal, we would be singing instead if it's just about us. Just a closer walk with me. Or you would be singing our sermon hymn, which we will sing shortly by Fanny Crosby, differently if it's just about us. To us be the glory, great things we have done. But we know it's not. Yes, it is people, people, people. But it is people of God. Of God. So that we sing instead. As generations before us have and generations to come. Just a closer walk with thee. And we sing. To God be the glory, great things he has done. He has done, he has done. Thanks be to God. Amen. One, two, three, four, five. the Son, and give Him the glory, great things He has done. O oh, perfect redemption, the purchase of blood, to every believer the promise of God, the vilest offender who truly believes that moment from Jesus Son and give him the glory, great things he has done. Great 
taught us great things he has done, and great our rejoicing through Jesus the Son. But purer and higher and greater will be our wonder, our transport when Jesus we see. Praise the Lord, praise the Lord, let the earth hear his voice. Praise the Lord, praise the Lord, let the people rejoice. Oh, come to the Father through Jesus the Son, and give him the glory, great things he has done. With the whole church. Let us confess our faith in the words of the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, God's only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day, he rose again. He ascended into heaven. He is seated at the right hand of the Father, and he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Please join us as we pray. Oh God, your people gather to praise you and we go to make your love known. As we come together, Lutheran Church of Del Rapids, together this week as a congregation to begin in our annual meeting to chart our future in this year 2021 and beyond, we pray, make us mindful of your love for your people and make us intentional in sharing that love with one another. Fill us with praise, we pray as well, that love that originates in you. So oh God, we implore your mercy for all of those who this day are in need. For all who are ill, who are alone, who are in fear, who grieve. Especially, oh God, we pray today for Ben and Rachel Meyer at the death of their daughter, Emberly. Give your people peace. Give us hope. Give us all a certainty because of Jesus and resurrection to new life. We continue to pray, O oh God, for the safety of all of your people, thankful for your hand in the development of vaccines. And pray, O oh God, that you would help keep us all safe, keep us all vigilant, that your people may be well. We pray, O oh God, with thanksgiving for our partners in Christian ministry, for the food pantry here in Del Rapids, for Church on the Street and the St. Dismas Prison Congregation, the Banquet in Sioux Falls. For the Pine Ridge and Two Strike Ministries in South Dakota. For our friends of the Lutheran Church of Faith and Hope in Nicaragua. And for all of the work of the people of the Evangelical Lutheran Church in America, all across your world, that everywhere, oh God, your love may be made known. Into your hands 
O God. We commend all for whom we pray, trusting in your mercy. Through your Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. gathered here in the sanctuary at this time we would be receiving the offering we're not able to do that with your not being present but uh, want to sincerely thank you for the way that you have continued to support the ministry of the congregation and would just encourage you to continue to send in or bring in your offerings uh, as you have done Thank you so much. At this time, then, if you are prepared to receive the sacrament of Holy Communion, if you have the words of institution that were mailed to you and you have the elements present, you can now at this time pause the recording and uh, commune your family together. Let us unite our hearts together in the prayer that our Lord taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. One, two, three. Just a closer walk with thee. Guide me gently, 
ever walk with thee. Granted, Jesus is my plea. Daily walking close to thee. Let it be, dear Lord, let it be. As we conclude our worship, go in peace. Love one another. Serve the Lord. Thanks be to God. Amen.